Howdy folks, welcome back to Black Sheep Meadow. I'm Brent. And I'm Amber. And we got a good one for you today. <laughs> We're gonna talk a little bit about compost here in a minute and using the resources on our homestead. Uh, Amber's probably gonna hang out here. As you can see, she is making some dandelion syrup off yep. some dandelions that she collected. <laughs> I've never made it before, but I'm gonna try it out and see how it is. It could be a big fail could be the best thing I've ever had in my life. So uh, we are in, the, I believe, you know what? I think we finally got everything planted that we were going to plant this spring 2023, right? I think so. I think so. It feels so, like it. If y'all are just if y'all are just new to the channel or just now joining us uh, to get y'all up to date for the year 2023, me and Amber are attempting to grow 80% of all of our own food here on the homestead. Um, some of our food, or it's gonna be from other local homesteads as well. Like our beef is gonna come from her parents or our pork may come from uh, the coffles, which we've had them on previous videos as well. Non-commercialized. Correct, yeah, we're staying away from the grocery store. So uh, that being said, for this year on our garden, I used something like over 50 yards of compost for our raised beds, our buckets, our potato hills, uh, our tomato plants, et cetera, and so on. And I know that next year we're gonna need probably pretty close, maybe not quite 50 yards, maybe close to the neighborhood of at least 35 yards. And that being said, I have to get started on that now for the compost to be ready 2024. So I guess I'm gonna leave you here. Yep. I'm gonna go start working on this. So uh, doing things like in the permaculture fashion, we don't have as much yard as we once did. Uh, a lot of our yard, per se, has turned into areas that are growing edible fruits and vegetables for us now. So, but the yard that we do have, uh, obviously we're in the second week of April now, so we've had to do a few lawn cuttings, but this last lawn cutting, I let it get a little bit high, and I saved all my grass clippings from that, so I'm gonna add on to a previous pile, compost pile that I started last year, and we're gonna continue it on for this year. So, y'all hang in there, let's get y'all down there. I'll let y'all know how the syrup comes out. All right, so we've had storms this past week, I think three or four days, uh, totaling up about five inches of rainfall. And uh, before the storms got here last week, I was able to cut what, what yard we have left. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're trying to turn everything into uh, something edible. But the uh, yard, I was able to let it grow a little taller than I normally would. And I saved all my grass clippings. This makes excellent nitrogen material for our compost pile. We're gonna add on to this compost pile right here in the background. Get y'all moved around there. And as you can see, this pile is a pile we started last year. And I kind of let it go over the winter time. I you know, ignored it and let it get to a position that I probably shouldn't have. But I want you to notice I kicked the pile earlier over here and you can see how well the compost is actually starting to, the material starting to compost down inside the pile versus this is just sawdust shavings that I've applied on top. So we've had plenty of rain. I don't have to bring water out here for this pile currently. The material that I have that I'm gonna put on the pile and add to, I'm not gonna have to add water to for at least a week. We're gonna have rain, I think another, we're projected to have another two or three inches this week in the next two to three days. So right now, I just need to mix some material, get some oxygen to it. Mother Nature's gonna do the rest for us. Y'all hang in there. All right, so I was wrong. The one, and a, one to one and a half cubic yard pile is actually probably closer to two, two and a half. Uh, from here on out in the future, especially after we build onto the pile today, uh, that's not gonna be shovel work anymore. That's all gonna be work for the hydraulics on the tractor. Nonetheless, stay in here while I get the my nitrogen material, my green glass, grass clippings, 
and I got a pile of sawdust that's actually from untreated pine lumber. We're gonna get these in alternate layers on the pile and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we got our pile covered up with our carbon material. I'm gonna get a thermostat in it so I can monitor it here in the next coming two to three weeks. Um, that pile still had a lot of moisture in it and we still got a lot of rain coming later on this week. I don't think I need to add any water to it right now. We've added plenty of oxygen to it. Um, you know, while I was flipping this pile, I kind of I was thinking to myself, you know, I really wish I could have filmed myself when I started doing compost over six years ago. Uh, you know, I've really changed my tactics and the way I do it. I found that one of my favorite materials to compost is actually the sawdust shavings with the green grass clippings. Uh, it works out. We compost all kinds of material, but that is actually probably my favorite. I think it makes the best soil uh, overall. But I encourage y'all to go out and, you know, attempt it to yourself because, uh, you know, you're only going to learn by doing it. There's only so much you're going to get out of this video. But uh, some of y'all may notice I've got a pile of rotten decaying tree back there. And that was probably a little bit of exposure to uh, a project that we're going to have later on this summer. And we're going to build another Hugo culture mound. So before I cut out today's video, I'm going to touch base with y'all on that, get y'all some tidbits there. All right, so before we get to the Hugo culture mound, I want y'all to take note here. This is Amber's onion bed that we planted in, I believe, November of 2022. Uh, this carrot bed here was made in the exact same fashion as the onion bed. We have videos on both of those. Now, as we go over to the Hugo culture mound, I want to note that everything that's been planted in this Hugo culture mound was planted at the exact same time that we planted our crops in our raised bed or in the, the just the garden area of the tubs. Basically what we have is all the seeds that were left over from our raised bed crops. We just took the extras and put them in the Hugo culture mound. Now, I want y'all to look at how amazing those onions are doing. I mean, that is just phenomenal. Here we are April 8th or so, first week in April, and we have onions that are probably less than a week away from harvesting. Growing zone 8B. Potatoes, the same thing. The potatoes went in the ground. Uh, get y'all in there. The potatoes went in the ground February 20th. Once again, these are all carrots. These carrots are planted a little bit later than our raised bed crop, but nonetheless, they are coming up phenomenally. I believe the reason the onions did so well in this Hugo culture mound is A, not only the nutrient level the mound's able to hold, hold moisture, uh, but we had 11 degrees the week in between Christmas and New Year's this year. And I believe this mound held enough heat for the root system of those onions to maintain a lot better than they did in the raised bed garden. So that's just phenomenal to see. We're gonna do another Hugo culture mound this summer. I'll keep y'all up to date on this one. Uh, fantastic progress with it. That's all I got to say. So guys, in the meantime, if y'all like what we're doing, leave a like, leave a comment down below. I believe last week or a couple videos ago, we had a Cindy Johnson guess the correct name to our scarecrow. Congratulations, Cindy. If y'all got any other questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, if ring the little bell for the notifications, we'll see y'all next week.